I have already explained to you the television set simply did not work properly. Hey guys, welcome back to the RCA KCS 34B chassis, which goes, I think, into that cabinet. It's out in the garage. When this chassis is restored, we'll be putting it all back together. Uh, recently, I pawed through a pile of old publications and I found the original factory service info for both this chassis and the other one I'm working on. So it's been very handy, and I have finished the recap. And I depowered it up, and I've got a raster. The big problem with this set was the tuner. So the tuner, it came with the ball bearing, the channel clunker is shot. And it's rather difficult to repair because of metal fatigue or whatever. The, the arm that there's a ball bearing that rolls along and snaps into slots, it just broke off. So, uh, luckily, I found another collector who had a spare tuner for me. So I picked it up at the early television convention a few weeks ago. And here she is. I just lubed it up, gave it a look over. It, uh, yeah, it's the same thing. I guess it came from an AT-T, model at t two four four, Should be awfully similar. So I don't think we'll have any trouble with that. So I'm getting ready to mount it right back in place. He did not include the tube shields, but I'll just swap them from this. And this is something that's kind of amusing on these early RCAs. They took a regular tube shield and they take a, about an inch of heavy lead pipe and smash it down over the tube shield and hold it on with a clip. <laughs> Why would they put a heavy lead jacket around it? I believe to reduce microphonics. I don't believe I know it's to reduce microphonics, but how well does it actually work? I don't know. It's not there to shield from radiation or anything like that. It's to keep the tube as still as possible. So you can imagine this sets mounted in the cabinet, and with the speaker, the cabinet can vibrate a little bit. You don't want the little elements inside vibrating, because that's the local oscillator. And that would throw the frequency off. Alright, so, shouldn't be too hard to pop that guy into place. Just a few screws, and then i got to hook up five connections along the back. And the signal input on the top, and i got to remember to install the right one. <laughs> I'm not installing that one, I'm installing this one. New tuner's been installed, tested all the tubes, does it work? Not exactly. Just starting to get into the troubleshooting phase. As the set warms up it does <laughs> various things, uh, but immediately, well, well a couple things. The tuner does receive, so here I'm off channel, here I'm on channel. Should be a crosshatch pattern. But that's what starts happening as it warms up. It goes from just full being washed out back to this. And stuff in between. Actually it's not a crosshatch pattern. That should be modulated video. This is a crosshatch pattern. So we don't have sync. That's one thing. Playing around with the sync controls now. This should be horizontal sync I'm manipulating. I've tried adjusting the coil. There's a coil, uh, I think this is a synchro guide system. That doesn't seem to be working too well. This, I believe, is contrast. So it's, at least at the moment, seems to be doing its thing. Minimal contrast, it gets washed out, go up higher, we start getting some definition. And this is brightness, which also seems to be working at the moment. Adjust fine tuning. That's doing something. And if I go off channel again. So, I've tried wiggling tubes, tapping tubes. Nothing jumps out of me right away as being. Uh, I've, I've yet to get a, a locked in picture on it. So, we're going to try a few tried and trusted uh, troubleshooting methods. One is signal injection. So I'm going to get this thing on its side. And just like with an amplifier, we're going to go the closest to the output. So we're going to go in the grid of the video amp, inject a composite video signal, and work our way back. Someone I actually brought this up online. It's a similar situation. I think it's also an RCA, but a little bit newer. And they're wondering if they could go all the way to the picture tube and inject a signal on the cathode or the grid of the picture tube. 
You could, if you use a blocking capacitor so you don't mess with the DC bias, but then you then you absolutely will not get sync. You should get some modulation, but you cannot get sync because the sync signal is picked off at the output of the video amp or in the video amp stage is either the first or second stage. So we really want to go to the grid of the v uh, first stage of the video amp. Then we should get strong signal for modulation, strong signal going into sync, etc. Okay, got my TVA92 fired up. I'll put in composite video. I can vary the level anywhere from zero to a couple hundred volts peak to peak in opposite polarity. Very handy device. Going through the coupling cap into the grid pin 2 of the 12AU7. This guy. And, oh, <laughs> as I was talking, it started to lock. It's kind of unstable, but I'm probably using uh, too much signal, and it could even be the wrong polarity. So let me back that off a little. Okay, well, no, that's not enough. All right, so this is probably the right polarity going this way. There is an AGC control on the back of this set, too. There's, there's quite a few settings in this. It's one of the more elaborate sets. There's a horizontal lock range. There's a horizontal drive. AGC. Linearity. Frequency. Horizontal hole. Vertical hole. I'm adjusting the AGC now. If you too strong a signal, you can get... Strangeness. Anyways, it still works... It's Obviously, being able to get a signal in with uh, direct injection, or I mean, I'm able to get a signal in and I can lock onto it. There's some other patterns. So, there's a circle pattern. So, you turn the brightness down, contrast down a bit, play with the hold a bit. It's getting there. Heck, let's try some modulated video. Alright, so the sync is a little goofy. And it's kind of overdriven. But clearly we're getting something coming through. So why does it not work through the other stages? Well, I'm going to play around with these controls a little bit and see if I... Get it more oh, 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 could it be so simple? Sometimes it's the little things. So, unlike the vast majority of sets I work on that have a couple screw terminals somewhere in the back for 300 ohm input, the, this generation of RCAs has this little tower here with a four prong plug on it. Now, I surmised from seeing what connects into this and and futzing around with it, that it's the the two larger ones go to the 300 ohm uh, antenna, and I've been clipping. It's a crude setup, but I've done it before, and it, it works well enough. Take my 300 ohm bell and and clip some alligator leads to it and clip it in. I'm just not looking for perfection, just to get a signal into it. It's not working that well, but take a closer look at what that plug is actually for. It allows you to do 300 ohm or 72 ohm coax. I just noticed something. In your 300 ohm mode, yeah, it is the two outer ones that go to that. But there's, you're supposed to short out pins one and three together. Let's see if that actually makes a difference. So why haven't I been using that uh, connector? Because it's in a cabinet. It's part of the cabinet. <laughs> um, but I might have one lying around here somewhere from uh, a different chassis. Otherwise, uh, 
I'll just try to get down in there. So what are those other two going to? Well, on one side it's going to ground. And this one, it looks like, is going to nothing. It's just going to that. So we need to short that one to ground. Alright, things are finally looking good going directly through the tuner. So what did I do? One, I went into the cabinet and I unmounted the 300 ohm antenna connection with that plug that has the short on it. Works more effectively than me trying to use an alligator clip. Two, AGC. So there is an AGC little tr uh, pot on the back of the short shaft. You basically have to use a screwdriver to adjust it. That's pretty critical. Or maybe it was dirty. I don't know. Here, I'll try playing around with it again. I don't know if that sets the AGC delay or what. No, no I probably won't be able to get this up. To, so this is kind of how it was before. And I was playing around with the contrast on the front, turning the brightness way up, and it was just a mess. So I'm going to turn that control back down. So there we go. So AGC, it may seem like a simple thing, or a basic thing. Early RCA sets did not have AGC. So the other one uh, I recently started on, this guy down here, this uh, 630TS based one. Or it is an RCA 630TS. No AGC. The contrast setting on those is just on the front and it's critical. You go too far, the picture gets inverted, you get all kinds of craziness. So this was like the next generation after that. So I think AGC was still kind of a new thing and it's fiddly. Or contrast plus AGC. So the contrast would be the manual gain control I'm doing right now. And then the one on the back adjusts the automatic gain control, some parameter of it. And when you get them both right, voila. And it's, it was finicky. It took me, took me uh, about an hour of futzing around to finally get this to have a stable image. So, all right, I think we're good. Here's the RCA 630TS I just started on recently. This doesn't have AGC. It uh, is completely manual, and it's a very critical adjustment. And if you go too far, the picture inverts, or... It gets all washed out, disappears. This was, uh, I think, their, the next generation, so sort of like their first foray into AGC in a TV. And apparently it's kind of finicky. So, there we go. There we go. Now the last thing with this, aside from making some final tweaks to it, is sound. We have not heard any sound coming out of this set yet. That's because the speaker's in the cabinet. The speaker's almost as big as the picture tube. So I have not unmounted it yet. So I'm either going to unmount the speaker, now that I have the cabinet down here, or I'll get some alligator clips on and hook it up. It's just a permanent magnet speaker. Nothing fancy. It's not a field coil or anything. Assuming we have sound, I think we can start putting this set back together. I kind of want to see this too. So this there's a little jewel at the bottom of the cabinet. And this goes behind it to light up. Be kind of a neat effect. Oh yeah, and the fine tuning. Ah. You know, but quite frankly, I think I could adjust this so it'll be a good, good, good sound and video and kind of leave it. <laughs> if somebody really needed to, they could kind of, well, we'll see when it's in the cabinet if it's possible to get at this with the kit with the chassis in the cabinet. Otherwise, yeah, I gotta do some hunting around. But at least I can slide this back into the cabinet for now and get it off the workbench and free up some space. Finally, finally making some progress. So, yeah, the, the, the replacement tuner works. Thank you very much for that really saved my butt on this project I thought that speaker connector looked familiar so I went through my assortment of speakers up here so several that looked right but these are both field coil but I found one I found one it's a permanent magnet got it hooked up oh yes we have sound You know, we have a stable picture. Now there's one other thing, aside from this fine tuning belt, I gotta deal with, or I should deal with, I think. And that, unfortunately, is flaking DAG coating. It's especially bad where you guys can't see it down all along the bottom here. 
and it's kind of unstable in other areas. So, much as I'm loath to do it, I am going to take this out, even though from the beginning I said I didn't want to. Uh, I don't think it'll be too tough. I need to loosen a strap in the front. So it clips on, okay, so it clips on this side, but this side has a screw. So all I have to do is loosen that screw. And I'll take some reference photos for where this was positioned, just to save myself some time. When I put it back, take that off, and plug that, and it should just slide out. And then spray on some slip plate. That worked out really well. I just took a microfiber cloth and wiped it down, which snagged any loose edges and pulled it off. And then I sprayed uh, the new stuff over the old. I've had trouble with that in the past sometimes where the solvent from the new stuff causes crazing, cracking, lifts up some of the original coating. But in this time now, blended in perfectly. The other thing I didn't do is to expedite this. I didn't mask off meticulously like I usually do. Because I was mainly spraying on the other side, but there is a little bit of overspray around here. I've got to clean that off. You do not want any conductive material anywhere near that guy but otherwise yeah that, that's great nice warm day this dried almost instantly it occurred to me you guys might be wondering what does this set actually look like so went out to the garage and brought the cabinet inside fingers crossed things are going to proceed smoothly and i'll be putting it back in soon so yeah it's a 12 inch console set faux finish around the front or at least I'm pretty sure that's faux finish and not actual veneer they really seem to embrace that at this point in time same with the other one so the other the chassis I'm working on is a tabletop set the AT241 that it also has photo finish meaning it's not real wood grain it's real wood behind it but the the fancy flame mahogany book matched veneer stuff that's just painted on Anyway, it's actually in pretty darn nice shape. So I think uh, maybe a little Howard's Restore finish, a little wax, and uh, a little cleaning up, and that'll be about that for the cabinet, which is fantastic. I noticed the safety glass was loose inside the cabinet. It was rattling around. Plus, I wanted to clean in there anyway, so I went to remove it, and... The, uh, some of the supporting structure just fell apart. All the glue joints have failed. So let's see, strips of wood here. Get this glass out now, so. <laughs> One of the four is still in place, but it's ready to fall out. Actually, no, it's still attached pretty well. <laughs> At least I have a model for how they should go. And then there's some dried out black stuff. That's probably some kind of foam that was there to cushion the glass. And that is completely gone, so. I'll come up with something for that, but first I gotta get out the glue and glue those strips back on. I think I'll uh, put the whole cabinet face down and some padding, make this job a little bit easier to do. Here is the set finally all put back together. I was able to repair those strips of wood that broke off, put some new padding in. The safety glass is secured now. Let's fire it up so a little jewel light at the bottom and if you're wondering why does this need a light at the bottom you can tell if this sets on can't you there's a phono mode there's a switch on the back when you engage the phono mode it disables the picture tube so no the picture the set could be turned on and the screen would be dark so that's why you need that and for those of you who didn't know me tv has just launched a new channel a few days ago uh, that shows vintage cartoons and they've licensed just about every cartoon made from the 20s through the 70s 80s it's pretty impressive <laughs> so, so they're showing bullwinkle right now as far as the performance that's uh, pretty darn good that giant speaker down here the big 12 inch speaker sounds great and uh, produces a real sharp picture if i switch back to a channel that is color you'll see that the bandwidth is good enough that we uh, actually can see some chroma dots and what are chroma dots that means 
Uh, it's a black and white set. It wasn't designed to show color info. So when there is color channel programming being shown, you get little dots that kind of indicate what color is being shown or what color is being broadcast. It's uh, like the, the chrome information, the color burst info. You get these little funky dots in there. They limited bandwidth in TV starting at 54, 55 to eliminate that, but the earlier sets you still get it. Doing it myself. All right, that is going to be it for one of the dueling RCAs, the console. Next up, we'll finish off the tabletop set. Hope you enjoyed watching this restoration series. Thanks for watching.